very busy week in the U.S. capital for Caribbean leaders. I'm Ambassador Curtis Ward, and this is the Washington Report. It was an extraordinarily and unusually busy week for Caribbean leaders visiting Washington, D.C. for high-level interactions with the Biden administration and with the U.S. Congress. I have been observing U.S. Caribbean activities in the U.S. Capitol for decades, and this level of engagement by Caribbean leaders is a rarity. As a matter of fact, not since the 2007 Washington Conference on the Caribbean and the summit with the Caribbean leaders and President George W. Bush had we seen such intense and meaningful engagement by Caribbean leaders in Washington. One of the major highlights of the week was a meeting between Vice President Kamala Harris and five Caribbean leaders on September 15 to assess progress on commitments made by President Biden and Vice President Harris in their meeting with Caribbean leaders at the Summit of the Americas in June 2022. The Biden-Harris administration committed to partner with Caribbean nations on three specific areas, energy security, access to finance, and food security, which Caribbean leaders identified at the summit as priorities for the region. President Biden and Vice President Harris agreed to establish three high-level action committees, each co-chaired by Caribbean and U.S. representatives to develop near-term solutions to these pressing challenges in the region. The five Caribbean leaders who met with Vice President Harris on September 15th were President Chan Santoki of Suriname, the current chair of CARICOM. The three Caribbean co-chairs of the action committees, Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados, co-chair of the Finance Committee, President Dr. Irfan Ali of Guyana, co-chair of the Food Security Committee, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago, co-chair of the Energy Security Committee, and President Luis Abinader of the Dominican Republic. The meeting was convened to discuss the plan of actions to build on and accelerate implementation of the U.S. partnership to address the climate crisis, PAC 2030, launched by Vice President Harris at the Summit of the Americas to strengthen energy security and climate adaptation in the Caribbean region. There are three initiatives on the agenda for actions to promote energy security, four initiatives on actions to promote access to finance, and six initiatives on access to promote food security to, to engage in the near term under the Zero Hunger Caribbean Plan, according to a White House statement. On the energy security initiatives, the US will work with Caribbean countries to develop technical assistance packages and prepare viable energy projects that are attractive to investors and provide support to the region's energy infrastructure development goals. On access to finance, the US will explore access to financing for a gradual for graduated countries suffering from extreme events, doubling the capital for IDB Invest, convening a correspondent banking group and US membership in the Caribbean Development Bank. Food security began with the $28 million assistance program to address urgent food security needs and the U.S. will deploy advisors to the Caribbean on efficient use of fertilizer, biofertilizer production, nutrient engagement, crop insurance feasibility, 
and to develop an operational logistics and supply chain model to streamline intra-regional trade. Also, on September 14th, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met with CARICOM Chairman Surinamese President Chan Santoki to discuss the importance of regional security cooperation, shared prosperity and inclusive growth, and promoting the rule of law. A State Department release said, Sector Blinken emphasized the strength of US-Caribbean relationship and the importance of bilateral and multilateral cooperation to make progress on the Caribbean's most pressing issues, such as food security, access to finance, energy security, and climate resilience. At the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, on Capitol Hill, Prime Minister Mia Motley appeared before the House Finance Committee, chaired by Representative Maxine Waters, on the issue of de-risking and correspondent banking relations in the Caribbean. Congressman Waters said she was dedicated to resolving the issue of de-risking in the Caribbean and welcomed the Barbados Prime Minister as giving voice to a topic that matters to every person in the Caribbean. Noting the historic nature of the hearing on September 14, Congressman Waters said it was nearly 40 years since a Prime Minister testified before Congress and that Prime Minister Motley's presence underscored the gravity of the issue and the urgent need to take serious steps to end the deterioration of global financial access for Barbados and the whole region. Congressman Waters also welcomed Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago, who was present to lend his support. Congressman Waters said US well-being is directly linked to that of the Caribbean and that dwindling financial access endangered these mutual benefits. She said her committee had secured key anti-money laundering provisions in the 2021 National Defense Authorization Act with a mandate for a US government-wide strategy to address financial de-risking. Framing the situation as a US national security issue Chairman Waters warned that unless the U.S. took action to alleviate this problem, the U.S. would be ceding its leadership in the region to countries like China and Russia. Congressman Waters said, U.S. well-being is directly linked to that of Caribbean. Interesting. She said solving the de-risking and correspondent banking crisis required broad collaborative efforts. And under her leadership, the committee will continue to press for action, including by removing from US government reports unsubstantiated stigma of the region as being a haven for money laundering. Prime Minister Motley, in her testimony, expounded on the dangers of de-risking and loss of correspondent banking to the survival of Caribbean economies. She warned that Caribbean countries would be reduced to underdevelopment and even to failed state status. She noted that Caribbean economies cannot function on their own without access to these banking services and pointed out that the costs and delays in opening up bank accounts <clears throat> affect the human rights of individuals while making it difficult for investors to choose the Caribbean, and that lack of correspondent banking could disrupt diaspora remittances and entire activities in the Caribbean. Prime Minister Motley said the hypocrisy 
of the listing of the Financial Action Task Force and the OECD on the risk of terrorism financing and money laundering, targeting the Caribbean rather than following the money where suspicious deposits are made in New York, London, Switzerland, and Luxembourg, countries that are not listed, while unfairly and unnecessarily listing Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, and Barbados. She said the FATF and the OECD listing is the most nonsensical thing seen in public policy. Hmm. An engaging agenda for U.S. Caribbean partnership, from which much is expected. A busy week indeed. This is a master purchase with the Washington Report.